Hey there, welcome back to Semtech channel. So this is tutorial two on our transmission line calculation. So in this tutorial, we're going to use a nominal pi model to solve this particular problem where we've got a three phase transmission line that supplies 30 megawatt of power with a stack connected load. And the line basically at the receiving end is 33 kilovolt with a power factor of 0 0.7 lagging. Now the line constant basically per phase parameters of the impedances and capacitance because this is the nominal pi model. Let me just bring the circuit here for this pi model. So we've got capacitors represented at both end of the circuit, basically at the sending end and at the receiving end with our series impedance of the transmission line. Now this is a single phase representation of this pi model. Great stuff. Now, before we start solving this problem, let's first answer this very basic question. Why do power system engineers use the nominal pi model to solve transmission line problem? Now, the answer is very simple and you have to pay attention. This is because this model or method uh, is widely used because it's effectively uh, represent both the series uh, impedance of the line and the shunt capacitance at both ends of the transmission line okay so making it suitable for medium length transmission line uh, of typically 80 uh, to let's say 250 kilometers okay now the model simplifies uh, the analysis by lumping the lines parameters into manageable uh, form without sacrificing the accuracy of your calculations so which uh, indeed help in calculating voltage drops power flow and uh, the system stabilities which we're going to see in a moment the main advantage here is that it captures the essential electrical characteristics with fewer calculations compared to uh, a more complex uh, distributed models okay so offering uh, a good balance between simplicity and precision for practical engineering problems that what we're going to see in a moment so now without wasting any further time on this so let's start so this is going to be a step-by-step -step, uh, problem uh, solving strategies here the way you do it is very simple first you need to understand what you've been given to you okay here i've already simplified it uh, for us to represent the different currents uh, in our circuit so we've got the sending current and we've got the current through these capacitors i've named it i2 and the line current i3 and we've got i1 through this send and the, the, the receiving end capacitance and ir which is a current at the receiving end so now the question for us is to solve for the voltage current and power factor at the sending and, and obviously, once you've got that, you can solve the efficiency of the line by simply dividing the power at the receiving end, which is 30 megawatt, by the input power. It's as simple as that. Now, let's assume that you are sitting in an exam class and you've been given this power system problem. So, the first thing, obviously, you need to read the problem statement, understand it very well, know the given data and what's missing so that you can answer the question so here our given data very simple the first one is active power now this power is at the receiving end okay then it is at a power factor of 0 0.7 lagging that means the angle is negative 45.7 degree next is the receiving end line voltage this is 33 kilovolt it is being given here okay the next parameter is the impedance per phase so we've got 30 ohm and 40 ohm for the reactance that means our z per phase can be calculated here as 50 uh, the magnitude with an angle of 53.13 degree now the impedance here has been given in rectangular form then we convert it to polar form because this helps us with the calculations and it pre prevents you from making mistakes. So to do that, you grab your calculator. Make sure your calculator is in complex mode, okay? So you go on mode setup, number two. That means you are in complex. 
okay then you enter your resistance here it's 30 plus your reactance which is 40 ohm okay 40 then 40 j or 40 i okay then you just hit equal now that basically you've entered your impedance in a rectangular form now you're going to click on shift to now convert it in polar form and you're going to hit complex then you're going to select number three okay and then you say equal then we basically have 50 the magnitude with an angle of 53.13 degree now this is what you need to do for all complex calculations because this uh, makes it shorter and it prevents you from making mistakes if you're going to do calculation using the rectangular form you're going to do a lot of cross multiplications and you might make mistakes great stuff now having said that we can continue with our parameters here so we got the shunt reactances basically c1 and c2 they're both minus 800 ohm that basically we've got 800 with an angle of negative 90 degrees because it's purely capacitive great stuff so first step in order to solve this problem is to convert the line voltage into a phase voltage so our line voltage here is 33 kilovolt so we're going to convert 33 kilovolt into a phase voltage that very simple we simply divide it by the square root of 3 so we got 19.052 kilovolt second step is we calculate the current at the receiving end now this is this current here okay so that's the current that flowing into the load this is our load okay in order to calculate the current at the receiving end you need to see what you've been given so we've got active power okay already stated here then we've got a power factor so you can use the power formula to basically calculate your current so you can deduce by the way if you find this tutorial useful please make sure you give it a thumbs up and subscribe to Simtech channel that will be highly appreciated thank you so very much and also if you are uh, preparing for your power system exam or you have an assignment if you would like to receive assistance from Simtech channel you are more than welcome to reach out and you can also join Simtech channel membership that way you can make tutorial requests and specific requests for your particular problem thank you so very much for assistance great stuff now using the power formula we can simply uh, deduce that ir is equal to pr divided by the square root of 3 times vr times cos theta okay pr we know that is 30 megawatt and we can find the magnitude of the current at the receiving end here to be 749.8 but now wait this current must have an angle because they say the load here okay has a power factor of 0 0.7 which is lagging we know that the angle between the voltage and the current is negative 45.57 degree so we simply going to state that our current is 749.8 with an angle of negative 45.57 degree then we continue step three now we have this current okay remember we need to find the voltage current and power factor at the sending end which means we are looking for uh, this voltage we don't have this voltage we don't have this current okay so how we get them is by working backward that is exactly what we're doing great now we've got uh, this current the current at the receiving end now we're now aiming at the line current but before we get there we need to find i1 because i3 is basically i1 plus ir okay now we know that to find i1 here the current through this capacitance the shunt capacitance we need to find the voltage across this capacitance now this is where it get tricky because the this is a parallel this capacitance is in parallel with the load here but now we got the current using the line voltage which is 33 kilovolt okay but now if you use this line voltage to find the current through this capacitance you going to get it wrong because this is a single phase uh, a, a diagram okay 
So these are per phase parameters. So you must use a per phase voltage to find the current through I1. This is why we converted the line voltage here uh, to a phase voltage. Okay, but now why didn't we use the same phase voltage to get IR? Because IR in a star configuration, IR is the line current is equal to the phase current is basically the same. I explained it in the previous tutorial. So we have to use now the phase voltage to find I1. Okay, having said that, the formula is very simple. IC1 is VR phase divided by XC1. And that basically gives you 23.81 with an angle of 90 degrees. Now, this also you're going to do it very simple using the calculator, just as I've shown earlier. Now we move on. Step four. We now need to find I3, the current through the series impedance, basically the transmission line current. Now this becomes very simple. We're simply going to apply Kirch of current law here. So the sum of current leaving the node is equal to the current entering the node. So I3 here is entering this node here. Okay, while I1 and IR are leaving the node. So simply I3 is I1 plus IR, and that basically is going to be equal to these two current added together in this form. Okay, basically in polar form. You can also do this with your calculator. Uh, very simple. If I may just show it quickly here for those who would want to know. So it's 749.8 shift. And we enter the angle, negative 45.57 plus 23.81 shift with an angle of 90 equal. Okay, now the answer is by default in rectangular form. Now we're going to go shift to get our answer in polar form. 3 and then equal. And that's the answer. Uh, so we have a current of 732 or 33 with an angle of negative 44. So that basically the current through the transmission line. Now we move on step five. Great stuff. Now to find the voltage drop across the transmission line, this is very simple. We now know the current or the line current here. Okay, so we are simply going to multiply the line current times the impedance of the transmission line per phase. Remember, okay, per phase parameters, and this current is also a per phase current because the per phase current and line current are the same in a star connected system. Okay, so having said that, Vz is I phase times Z phase, that means it's 50. Uh, with an angle of 53 times 733 with an angle of negative 44.3 and that basically give us this voltage a huge voltage drop of about 36.6 kilovolt with an angle of 8.86 okay now we know what this voltage is now before we can find this current okay we first need to find the sending end voltage and we're going to do that by adding this voltage okay plus the voltage at the receiving end but we're not gonna use the 33 kilovolt we're going to use the phase voltage because we're working with per phase parameters okay so that will be step six the voltage at the sending end is basically v send is equal to vr theta plus vz theta per phase parameters never forget that so it's gonna be 19.052 with a zero degree angle with a plus 36.6 kilovolt with an angle of 86 that's given to us here and that means the sending end voltage for this system is 55.5 with an angle of 5.83 degree kilovolt now this means we now know what is the voltage across uh, the shunt capacitance at the sending end it is exactly the voltage at the sending end so we can now calculate i2 using that voltage remember this is a per phase it's not a line voltage it's a per phase voltage at the sending end obviously if you want to calculate a line voltage at the sending end 
you must just multiply the 55 times the square root of 3 then you're going to get uh, this voltage that is at the sending end and you can see the difference between this voltage and this voltage that tells you how much voltage drop you have across this transmission line okay moving on step 7 now in step 7 here we're going to apply the same formula used in step 3 okay this time around we're now going to use the voltage uh, at ascending end the per phase voltage that we just calculated here 55.5 to basically get i2 okay so that will simply be 55.5 divided by the 800 xc okay so that will give you a current of 69.4 with an angle of 95.8 degree m okay now once you have this current you're going to apply the same uh, curve of current law that we applied here at this node you're going to apply it at this node here okay by simply uh, doing is here is equal to i2 plus i3 okay so that will basically give you the current at the sending uh, end of the line which is the same uh, as a phase current at the sending end of the line that is your i2 plus i3 so this is uh, i2 and that's i3 now once you find this current okay then obviously you're going to use this current to calculate the power at the sending end the same formula that we use here to find the current at the receiving end this current now you're going to make p s here it will now be p s as the subject of the formula that will now be the square root of three times v s times cos theta times i s but remember there is a trick here in finding the power factor at the sending end you need to add the power factor of the sending end current so let me know in the comment section uh, if you're going to get it right because after you find the power at the sending end you can then take uh, the power at the receiving end here of 30 megawatt okay you can then divide it with the power at the sending end that means you're going to get your question number two the efficiency of the line so i'm going to stop this here if uh, you attempt to uh, get that final efficiency let me know in the comment section so if you find this tutorial useful uh, please don't forget to uh, give it a thumbs up share it to your social media network until next time stay tuned uh, to simtech channel cheers